Oh, what's up, people? Dom Silver Sprite here, and welcome to Game Gems episode 6. And you guys voted for it. Apologies if it took a long time, but I've had a lot of projects to do. Welcome to episode 6, The SNES. Now, the Super Nintendo hasn't been in my collection for a long time. I'm not talking about like maybe, I'm talking maybe 10 years I've had it with me. And looking for video games has been quite difficult, as you guys know, because the amount of craze for retro games nowadays. But luckily for me, though, going into Japan for two times with uh, Yugi Boy Joe and then on my own, on my lonesome, I found some Japanese SNES games, and some of them were great, some of them were bad. But either way, I found five gems in my collection that I want to talk to you guys about because I would ins definitely insist you guys to try and get yourself a copy of these. Or if you really are, if you really don't have the console, but you still want to try out, I'm sure that there is a ROM hack or a ROM version of it on the PC. Anyhow, let's get started with my five game gems. So the first one I really want to talk to you guys about is Batman Returns on the SNES. I'm not talking about any of the other Batman Returns that's on any other consoles because the rest of them are all awful in my eyes. This is the only one that is actually good and it pretty much is a beat em up game. It's a, literally a side scroller with a bit of fighting in it. It's pretty much, to simplify it, it's a Batman version of Streets of Rage. That's all it is. But by God, it's a lot of fun. And they definitely made sure Batman make, is really good in this game. Now, as you guys know, this is the Japanese version. It's pretty much exactly the same as the English version. It's just in Japanese writing. But why do I think this is a gem in my eyes? It's because of all the games that are out there that has the same name of Batman Returns, this is the only one that actually is a good one. I'm talking about all of them. I'm talking about the Sega 3, the Sega CD, the Sega 32X, the um, oh, the uh, the um, there's loads of them. It's hard. It's hard to explain on how many there is because if you guys want to know how many of these Batman Return games is that. I'd have to tell you, tell you right now to go ahead and check out the Angry Video Game Nerd. I'm sure you guys have seen him before. He talks a lot about this game and by God, he's definitely helped me out as well to find this game because if I didn't know anything about this game, I wouldn't have bought it and I wouldn't have bought it in my gems. But it's definitely a gem in my eyes. So that's why Batman Returns is definitely a gem. It's a great fighting game, just like Streets of Rage. Definitely give it a go. Next up... I'm going straight into horror stuff right now, and that is Clock Tower. Now, Clock Tower, in my eyes, hands down, was the, ori is the originator of point-and-click games for horror. So if you guys are thinking you guys like your, I know, Until Dawn, um, the House of Ashes, M Madame Madan, Little Hope, all them type of click and, click and, cl click and look games that are ho horror games, Say thanks to this game because this is the originator in my eyes. And I know there is ones that are older than this, but this is the one that I think was perfect. Now, it made me think of what is Clock Tower. Now, pretty much to tell you simple, to tell you straightforward, there's three versions of Clock Tower. There's one, two, and three. Two and three are a lot more rarer, and I don't own them because one's on the PS1 and the other one's on the PS2. And, um, but thankfully, I got the Japanese version of Clock Tower because it was so dirty cheap, but it's still entertaining. It has the same mechanics as the English version. It is quite scary for what it is. For a 16-bit game, it is quite scary. Maybe not scary in this day of age, but back in the day, I would definitely consider it being a very good horror game. And I still think it is. It's definitely a gem in my eyes because not a lot of people really talk about Clock Tower. Hardly anybody talks about it. But with it is that it has the same mechanics as this day of ages games like um, Corpse Party as well because if you die you have to start back on that same spot and then you have to find a different situation to stay away from it because there's like 20 different um, ways of doing something so if you like there's a, there's a if the killer is on the left side you have to run to the right then you can hide in one room or the other or hide in a hay barrel or anything like that there's so many different ways to stay away from the killer but he always turns up unexpectedly 
He can may jump from the glass ceiling, he may come through a closet, he may come out of the bed, he may come out of a bathtub, he'll come out of anywhere. He is actually quite a terif terrifying character and if you not, don't have a clue who I am, I definitely encourage you guys to get to yourself a copy of this or like I said, try it on the PC. It's definitely worth the play and it's definitely a good horror game. And that's why it's a gem. Next up, number three, zombies. Now, you may be thinking, is that all it's called, zombies? Now, to simplify it and have its real full name in America, this is actually called Help My Neighbours Are Zombies. In England, which could, it's just called zombies. Don't ask me why they did it, I don't know why. But what this really is, is a search and find game. You're a little boy or a little girl going all over the neighbourhood, finding your neighbours who are still alive but you're also getting chased down by zombies. And it's not a scary game, it's actually a very, very good kid-friendly game in my eyes. Yes, it has zombies in it, but it's a lot of fun. It really is. If you want something that is similar to this, that is a find and search game, you can actually compare it to Michael Jackson's The Moonwalker. It had the same mechanics as looking for the children like Michael Jackson did. Or you can go ahead with this one and say that you're two, two children looking for the neighbours who are still alive. But you have to do it as soon as you can because if the zombies get them, they're dead. So, it's a, it, you have to be quick in this game because sometimes you can do on a hard mode, which I think on the PC there is a harder mode. In the SNES version, there ain't no difficulty at all. It just gets harder and harder as you play along. But it's a lot of fun. It really is. Not a lot of people talk about this. I think nowadays this thing goes around about 40 to 50 quid, just the cartridge on its own. It might be a bit cheaper now, but I'm not 100 sure. But, I remember this, I remember getting this in the car boot and I had no idea what this was until I put it in the car, put it in my um, SNES and found out it was Help My Neighbours With Zombies and I, was, I fell in love with it, it's such a great game. And it's just a shame that not a lot of people talk about it anymore because it's definitely a gem and if you guys, if you guys do own it, well done to you. If you don't own it, get yourself a copy of it, it's definitely worth, a, it's, worth it's definitely worth trying to play. Number four is one that there is a massive fan base, but sadly the fan base is not as great as Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and the other RPGs or JRPGs. And it should need a remake for God's sakes, and that is Chrono Trigger. This has to get a remake, but as well, it's definitely a gem because this thing literally got buried under. Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and the rest of the JRPG games. Not a lot of people talk about this anymore, unless you have a massive fan base for it. And there is a fan base for this. A huge fan base. And to be honest, it's a very unique JRPG, or an RPG, whatever you want to call it. Because, like, I'm just going to go ahead and say for Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy, you mainly get just humans. You may be lucky to get maybe one animal and maybe one monster, and that's it, as your team member. This freaking gives you everything you, it has for team members first of a human great then a monster great an animal great a zombie type of type of character great a vampire for god's sakes great a freaking giant a giant lady who's also like a titan that's awesome a mechanical person that's awesome literally they put their heart and soul in this game and it's just a shame that it's got neglected for many, many years. Squaresoft, aka Square Enix, I am begging you right now. I know you're not watching. <laughs> Get this remastered or remade. Get some new fans because it's definitely worth playing. And there's nothing else to really say. It's just absolutely an amazing game. It's definitely a gem in my eyes. And if you guys have never had a chance to ever play any of the Square games, um, you know, Chrono Trigger games, whether it's just Chrono, Chrono Trigger, whatever, give them a go. It's definitely worth to try. And now it's for the main event of my collection. I say is a gem of my SNES. And just to tell you a quick story about this game, I bought this when retro games were nothing really to bother about. There was no hardcore collectors, there was no scalpers, there was nothing. I bought this game in a normal game shop and they slashed it from £30 to £25 and it's boxed. And it's Super Castlevania 4. 
Oh shit, really Dobsy, you paid £25 for this game? Yes, it still has its old sticker on it. And I know it looks beaten up, yeah, but still the game is a fucking gem. It really is a gem. And you may be thinking, Dobsy, it's not even a gem, it's well known, everybody has this. No, you don't know what you're talking about, not a lot of people own this box anymore. If you got a box one, well done to you guys, you got a, definitely you got a massive diamond out of the rough. But just to tell you truthfully, I prefer this one out of all the Castlevanias. And yeah, I like Castlevania too, I like Symphony of the Night, but Symphony of the Night in my eyes is Metroidvania. It's a Metroid game, but with Castlevania. This is the originator of Castlevania, people. This is a remake of Castlevania 1, if you guys want to know. And what this really has, it has all the same mechanics as Castlevania 1, main story, all that lot, all that goodness. New bosses, like a massive golem titan in it. New, new dragons, like, you know, new type of bats and everything. It's awesome, it really is. But the main thing about this, they invented the rip. Yes, the vampire killer weapon, the whip. From the original games, from ripping left, right, up and down, that's all you can do. Now you can go diagonal, left, right, up and down, and twiddle your whipstick with a random button. And to be honest, I've beaten this game before with only the whip. And by God, it is really difficult, but you can actually defeat this game with just the whip without using any of the special items. But really, that's all I have to really say. There's nothing really for me to really say more about Super Castlevania 4 because there's lots of massive YouTubers who've talked about this high end all day long. But Super Castlevania 4, the remake of Castlevania 1, it's definitely a gem. And if you guys do not own this, sadly I'm sorry about it. But there is one thing I can tell you guys this got remastered on the SNES. I mean, the SNES version of Super Castlevania 4. It's been remastered on the Nintendo Switch, the PlayStation 4 slash PS5, and on the PC. I am not 100% sure if it got remastered on the Xbox. You can get a physical copy of the Castlevania collections on Limited Run on their website, but I'm not sponsored by them, so I'm not really talking about them. But main thing about it though, you can buy it on the eShop, on the Switch, and also on the network on PlayStation. And it's dirty cheap. I paid mine for $10.99 when it was on offer. I think it, the original price is around about 15 to 20 quid. It's worth it because you get this and other Castlevanias. And this is a gem. Come on, guys. You've got to give this a go. It's worth the money. It really is. So, that is my SNES game gems at the moment. Now, you may be thinking, Dobsy, is there other game gems that you have on your SNES? There definitely is. But what I'm going to try and do, after I've done all the rest of my consoles and my handhelds, which will take some time, I will start a new series and redo the whole lot again with new gems. So if you guys want to see that, please let me know. But anyhow, that is my SNES James of this, of this time. You have Batman Returns, Clock Tower, Zombies, Chrono Trigger and Super Castlevania 4. Next episode, episode 7, we're going to be doing... The Nintendo 64, an absolute inventive console and came out on my year of my birth, 1996. With that being said, the people absolute goes to you guys subscribing, like and subscribe and also go and check out Saw Fun. Cheerio!